Okay guys, these are by far some of the best plugins that you can get for Figma if you wanna increase your work rate and how fast you actually get things done. These are five plugins that I personally use every time I use Figma and maybe you can actually use some as well. Maybe you actually find some of them helpful. So first and foremost, if you don't know how to download a Figma plugin file, this is a really basic tutorial, but you go over to community, you go over to plugins here, and here you can kind of scroll down and you can see some of the ones that we already have in this tutorial. We can see that it really is just as easy as clicking install and you'll have it installs and you can then manage your plugins and see how many you actually have in your file. So one of the first plugins that I'm gonna showcase is called Blush. Now to access it, you just have to go in plugins and click the actual, the actual name and it'll pop up with a small tab just like this one where you can kind of scroll down and you have this this little section where you can look at what the what the what the plugin is. So in essence it's essentially just a lot of illustrations that you can use in your portfolio or in your projects and you can also th these aren't static illustrations. So what I mean by that is that you have certain poses like this person sitting here and it'll get placed into your canvas. And then the really cool thing about this is that you can then change what the head looks like or what the legs look like, maybe even the, the, the clothing. And then you can also change the color of that, of the top. So maybe you have a completely blue website, right? So maybe using red wouldn't make sense, or maybe it would, or whatever it is, right? And then you can also change the skin color and the color of the bottoms as well. So yeah, that's really cool. It's called Blush. I'll have all the links in the description so you guys can check them out. And yeah, these are just, you can use this with all of these different types of illustrations. They're different styles. We have some really famous ones like the Humans one, for example, and also Pablo Stanley. Some of you may know him. So yeah, that's Blush, really cool. Next up is Feather Icons. Now I haven't used this extensively, but in a nutshell, what it is is a section of icons or a group, a collection of icons that are really well made that you can use in all of your projects. And they're really minimal and really well done. And here is pretty much all it is. Say that you wanna use one of them, right? So say that you need the maps icon. You click it and then if you can see here, if we zoom in, it comes up with a small icon sized, a very small 24 by 24 image. Well, it's a vector actually. And so if you click Command K, we can then scale these to be just about as big as we want them to be. And obviously that keeps the same ratio of stroke to image size and it doesn't kind of mess that up. Now obviously you can use this, you can use as many icons as you want. I've personally used this feather icons to be the entire icon set from an app that I've that I've designed. And the best thing about this is just it's really reliable and it has all the same kind of styles so you don't go around getting different weights or different settings or 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 sizes or whatever. This is all the same designer. It's all one unified group of icons that you can use for all of your projects. Then we have Mockup Studio. So to showcase this, I'm gonna bring up the, the plugin itself. I'm gonna bring it up here. And I'm gonna go over to one of my one of my sample frames here. I'm gonna click collections, for example. Now I'm not sure what size this frame actually is because this is one of the, the sample ones created by Figma to show you kind of how to use the app, right? But the the main point of this is that whatever frame you click, it will create a mock-up for you. So we can see here that this is probably going to be a mobile device or some sort of some, an iPhone or something like that. So, so let's click on iPhone. Once we do that, we can see that it actually creates a huge amount of mock-ups for us, whether it's with a hand, without a hand, male, female, orientation, can be portrait or landscape, transparent or not. So say that I don't want it to be transparent Right, and then it just creates all these mockups for us. And then to use them, we simply click on it. So if you click on export, and for the preview, so to actually just have it in your project, it's completely free. But then obviously, if you want to use it for for public use or for for your actual app, you're gonna actually have to pay for it. So that is a downside of it, but I guess they do have to make money somehow. So I don't really blame them. But this is a really really good app, just because mockups are so hard to do. I mean, you have to go into Photoshop and drop them into the into the smart file and all these things but this just kind of takes all that in, out of the equation and, and creates it for you now obviously it's not the best in terms of ratio but again i didn't really i didn't make this right so it's it's kind of hard to tell if the ratio is right or not but yeah you can kind of play around with that and see how how well you actually like it 
The next one is gonna be Unsplash. Now I'm sure that you guys have heard of Unsplash. It's pretty much one of the biggest resources for stock free images. And to give an example, let's say that we need an abstract sort of image for for one of the one of the frames here. Let's say that we want an abstract image here. We'll click on abstract and it will create a massive image. Well, I guess just the native, the native size of the image. But if we actually go in here and we create an image itself. Now, if we click on abstract again, it will limit the image size to the actual rectangle or the actual shape that we drew. So we can do that again with art. So maybe it makes more sense because it's an actual art museum, right? Something along the lines of that. And then the cool thing is that when we go in here, we can then add an effect to it and give it a layer blur. And then let's just increase that. And here we can see that it, it pretty much just solves that entire issue for us, right? Of having, having to go into Unsplash itself and, and try to get new images or whatever. This kind of takes that all out of the equation. And here I'm kind of cheating, I'm doing the easy way where you kind of don't get the, the blurred edges. But obviously if you wanna get a really specific one, you can just go into search and type in, maybe we want art, you can type in art. And we get all of these different options. Now maybe this one makes more sense in terms of contrast. But yeah, once you click it in, it's there. It applies all the same effects that we had before and nothing's changed. This is just a really cool app that honestly I've used a lot and it's here. We can try it again on this one. Say we want to replace these two images and there you go. It does it for you. It keeps the same, I guess the same aspect ratio and it would make sense to have a, a rectangular image here. See, because if not, it kind of breaks that, that ratio. And then the last plugin is called Wireframe. This is a really, really good uh, plugin if you are just getting started with wireframing and you're kind of in, in the beginning process of that. And one of the comments that I read recently said that the person actually goes into, into their notebooks, actually draws it out, imports it, scans it or whatever, and then goes into Photoshop and creates wireframes and then into Figma. So this is just kind of takes five steps out of that equation. And here we can see what I, what I mean by that. So let's say that we're doing a a login and sign up page, right? Or something along the lines of that. Let's just create a frame here so I can show you guys. And here we have all the different, the different wireframes that we have that we can add, right? We have kits for specific uses. So we have a user flow kit. And here we can see that when we click on it, it shows us all the different wireframes that we can use. Now, maybe this is not the kind of style that you were looking for, but obviously there's different plugins out there that you can use. But let's say that you want to set up a, a login page. Here we have some of the, the wireframes. We click on the actual, the actual plus sign and it drops it into the, the file for us. But now we say that we're missing some, some menus, right? Or some headers or whatever. Here we have different, I guess. Here, let's go into mobile, let's go into menus. And yeah, we can kind of see just how much how many things that we can use for our for our project and obviously you can just scale it to a, as, as large as you want it maybe maybe it's not the right size for your project but yeah you can just layer these and make it into the best product that you can come up with and here we can see just exactly kind of right next to all the other ones we can see how easy it is to just build out an entire application with all these wireframes already done, right? It takes it so much out of the equation and you can start it, you can start to create animations and workflows and see what performs better with your customers, your clients, and see just what people actually prefer better. If you guys are new to Figma, then make sure you watch this video because I explain all the basics about Figma and kind of how to get started in Figma in 10 minutes or less. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.